This is a key moment in the summit, which we have spoken at length about cross-boundary um, sovereignty and rights issues around the Great Lakes and the Jordan River. And now we're going to bring these two places together, represented by uh, two groups of mayors. So in uh, introducing the, the panel chair, Joel Brammeyer, President and CEO of Alliance for the Great Lakes. And I'll just take a brief moment to say about Joel and his organization. They are one of the leading organizations in this region that works on both top-down and um, bottom-up advocacy uh, through the Great Lakes. And I'll take uh, something Joel wrote to me in an email, and he said, okay, I'm ready to do a little Friday afternoon diplomacy. So I know we can do it. I know we can uh, sustain our strength and keep up the momentum for the, um, for the signing of the Sister Rivers Partnership. And I'll just call Joel up to introduce our distinguished mayors, and just with a word of how absolutely thrilled that they're here, and that we will get to hear them speak about water in the city. Thanks, Joel. Um, just a couple quick comments. I work for a environmental organization, and I think there's a number of people in here who do as well. Um, one of the big challenges we have, and I, this is, I think, universal within the, the environmental movement in the United States, is the movement started, and, I, and I'm young for the environmental movement. I'm many, many generations past when it began, but I'm also a student of history. The movement started as a, as a, uh, a thought about protecting places, protecting places that were at risk, at threat. Uh, groups like the Sierra Club were foundational in making that part of the movement. And I work for an organization that has a place in the, in the name, uh, the Alliance for the Great Lakes. It's very obvious that we're a place-based organization. And as we've solved some of the, what I would consider the easier problems to solve, um, the environmental movement has started to grapple with the reality that, in fact, um, protecting places means protecting people. And thinking about environmental work in a way that elevates both the place that you're working in and elevates the people in that place um, is a new way of thinking for many folks. Uh, thinking about what it really means to dig into a region, uh, understand the people that are living there, and recognize that you cannot protect places uh, for future generations without elevating the people that work with, that work and live within those places. That's something we're struggling with as an organization. I think it's it's uh, it's shown up very clearly today in the in the last two hours of, of comments um, from our presenters in the previous panel, and. You know, I've been actually really humbled to be in the presence of a group that is working uh, where, where uh, not only is quality of life at risk, um, but at times um, the, the, the risk to one's own life is there. The issues of security and political challenge are uh, perhaps uh, more extreme than anywhere else in the world. Here in the Great Lakes region, we often worry about whether or not we're going to end up in court with uh, lawsuits between the states. That's about the extent of our, of our, of our true conflict risk. Um, so it's been very humbling uh, and inspiring to hear the stories uh, of what's happening in another part of the world where those risks look very different. Um, that said, uh, as I heard from one of our speakers to come uh, just uh, uh, in a few moments, uh, there are no borders between mayors. Um, our next panel has had the opportunity to talk with each other and get to know each other a little bit over the, over the last couple of days and have realized, I think, that when uh, people who run cities get together, they are grappling with the same issues regardless of where they are in the world. And we're going to hear some of those commonalities and differences as we go into the next panel. Um, one thing I know is that, uh, at least in, in the United States, I feel safe saying that politicians often get criticized for uh, speaking for a very long time without saying anything at all. And uh, I, I'm assured uh, by my uh, knowledge of at least uh, some of my uh, mayors here from North America who I do know, that that is absolutely not the case for mayors uh, and people who run uh, municipalities. Um, there's too much to be done and there's too much pressure to get it done quickly to spend time uh, talking without saying anything. So, and I'm, and I'm certain that is true for uh, our mayors uh, uh, from uh, the other uh, side of the world. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our mayors all at once, and I'm going to ask them to come sit up here in the order in which that they will be speaking. Uh, and so, when I uh, when I introduce you very briefly, uh, please come on up and, and have a seat, and then we'll get into our presentations. Our first speaker today is going to be uh, Mayor John Dickert uh, from Racine, Wisconsin. Mayor Dickert uh, gave me a long bio, but I'm just going to say that he's the chair of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River Cities Initiative, uh, and welcome to Mayor Dickert. I also want to... 
Uh, I also want to thank uh, uh, Simon Belial with the Cities Initiative who helped organize uh, the mayor's presence at this event. Thank you, Simon. Uh, our second speaker will be uh, Mayor uh, Khalifa Aldiat from Deir Ala, Jordan. Um, uh, uh, and Dr. Khalifa is an environmental activist and a mayor, which I love to hear. We have several. <laughs> We have several of those in the United States and Canada as well. So our third speaker today uh, will be Mayor Mitch Tulin from Huron-Kinloss, Ontario, Canada. He is the vice chair of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Mayor. Uh, our fourth speaker uh, will be uh, Mr. Ron Moho on behalf of Mayor Yossi Vardi, the mayor of the Jordan Valley Regional Council of Israel. Thank you. Uh, the fifth speaker today is uh, Mayor Denny Lapointe of Salisbury de Valleyfield, Quebec, uh, Canada. <laughs> and finally, uh, Mayor uh, Hassan Jirmi uh, of the Jericho Government, Palestine. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> so we're. Uh, and so we are going to start with Mayor Dickert today. We're going to go through each of the presentations, uh, and uh, we will have a translation for one presentation today. After, each pres after the six presentations, uh, we'll have some time for me to ask a couple questions of our panel, and then open it up to audience Q&A. So. Mayors, once you become a mayor, they shoot you up with some kind of caffeine thing, and you just want to get things done. You want to move them forward. You don't have time. You don't have money. So you create efficiencies. So what are we dealing with here? As a group, and I went to Paris about four years ago to work on the OECD report, which was the first time it was ever done in this area, in the Chicago metro Atlanta area, the Tri-State Alliance, and one of the things that we found out was this is what is anticipated by 2050. You see that big orange blob? Well, that's the expansion and growth that is anticipated by 2050. Will you turn the lights off on me? There you go. Okay. So I'm going to come out, well, I'm gonna come out here a little bit because you can see it a little better. Um, so if this is, you didn't need to have the lights back on for me, I was kidding. All right, so if you look at this, what does that tell you? It tells you that the fastest growing anticipated area in the country is the Midwest. Well, why? Two reasons. Uh, number one is we're around fresh water, right? Number two is there is a lot of municipalities in that area already, so the growth potential is there. Even greater than the areas that you would anticipate in California, which now we know even more of, is having trouble with water in the East Coast. So, but when you look at the next slide, which I think is coming up, or maybe it's not, there it is. This is the third largest economy in the world. Not the seventh, not the tenth, that's the third largest economy in the world in blue. And the fourth largest economy is way behind us. Not a little, way behind us which I believe is Japan. So we beat Japan. Take that. Look at all that fresh water. Look at all that space. That's where we're going. So there we are. I was right. See, I wasn't lying. Japan is fourth. But what we're talking about here is a regional economy that is based upon water. And that's going to be the big need. Now, here's the problems that we're dealing with. Our, our honorable mayors from across the seas are dealing with their own problems thinking that we have no problems in the United States with our water, but we do. Even though in 1972, when we had the Clean Water Act, and by the way, in seventh grade, the first speech I ever gave as a Tuesday optimist to try to win my award, that little plaque or something that you got, was on cleaning up the Root River because my grandfather used to swim in the Root River in Racine. When I was growing up, we had a joke in Racine. Root River is the only river you can cross in the summer or winter because it was that polluted. And when we used to go swimming, we'd come home with earaches. We didn't know why. It's because it was so incredibly contaminated, we were getting microorganisms in our ear, which would then cause a disease. So this is not a joke. Even though in 72 we stopped industrial pollution, now we have ag pollution micro uh, beads, uh, pharma, which is in, and these are issues that we have to deal with. So here are all the mayors that have gotten together, 114 of us from the Great Lakes area, US and Canada, and we're trying to solve some of these. We're working with great uh, organizations like Joel's and the uh, Great Lakes Commission to do that as well. These are the ones that are also a little tighter 
uh, around us. And by the way, if anybody wants to join, we're happy to accept you. Uh, it's Great Lakes and tributaries that work on this. Now, why do we do this? And I give speeches about this all the time. Why do we do this? Because in Racine, the home of 80,000 people, home of the best tasting water in America, and one of the top 200 beaches in the world, not in America, this is rated as one of the top 200 beaches in the world. That little beach brings us $5 million in tourism revenue every year. 220,000 people will be on that beach on a good summer. And I only have a city of 80,000 people. So we have to start talking about the economics of water. We have to start talking about the importance of water. And whenever anybody complains to me and says, Mayor, you know, I'm paying a lot for my water, I say, well, how much are you paying for your phone this month? And that usually stops the conversation. In Racine, your average quarterly uh, bill for water for a family of four is about $125 a quarter. I pay more than that per month for my phone. So we've got to get into a reality of what's going on here. I think that's my last slide, is it? Okay, it is. So we need to, number one, start talking about the economics of water. Number two, start working together as mayors. And number three, remember the fact that this is a bottom-up approach. Why? Because when we're talking about the lifeblood and sustainability of our people, let me tell you, we get a little antsy when people start trying to mess with that. Because this is the lifeblood of my community. And it's also the number one thing that sustains us. But it should be the number one thing that brings us together. So here's my, here's my last challenge to you, and then I'm going to get off the stage because we want to do this quickly, right? My last challenge to you is this. It's the same thing I said at the Sustainability Conference in Milwaukee, right? I'm challenging every single one of you to do something. Do not let us off the hook. Crazy, right? Politician telling you to tell him to get to work. But I'm not telling you about just the mayors. I'm talking about with Congress, with Senate, with governors, with everyone. Do not let us off the hook. Do not stop challenging us when we do not give proper answers for how we're going to solve these problems. Do not allow us to get some little quip and then walk away from a major challenge. Because as mayors, we can't do that. Everything gets passed down. So we have to deal with it. And I will tell you, I'm getting a little tired of dealing with it when people on top of me don't have the first clue as to how it's affecting us and how it's affecting them. So challenge us. Push us. Don't let us off the hook. Because here's why. Six years ago when I first ran for mayor, I said I was running because my eight-year-old son, his future was sitting in front of me right there. And I said, in 10 years, if I don't create a world for him that he can be proud of, then I have not done my job. So are we going to pass the buck to our future generations? Or are we going to say to our kids, we took this, we took this endeavor and we solved it. We fixed it. Or do we just simply say to them, well, you know, I was busy. I was on my iPhone and there was a cool app. And I really just didn't feel like making the tough decisions. I refuse to do that. I refuse to do that. So you refuse to accept answers that are simplistic, easy, and really ways out. Challenge us, make us do this. We have work to do, so let's get to it. Thanks. Okay, good evening. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's of my pleasure to be here and to address this distinguished audience. And uh, first, I'd like to extend my greetings and uh, thanks for everyone and every effort uh, that helped uh, this event take place. Uh, first, Dr. Rochelle, uh, the University of Illinois, Chicago, Ecobis Middle East, Sister Cities International, and Citizen Diplomacy Initiative. Uh, th this distinguished audience and my colleagues, the mayors taking part in uh, this conference. Uh, I am uh, mayor of Dar Allah uh, in Jordan. Uh, I am, uh, this is my second term in the municipality. Also, I'm an activist in my community. I'm, inter I'm uh, uh, involved in uh, membership of a lot of local and national NGOs because I like voluntary work. Uh, and 
I am concerned that sooner or later I should have uh, uh, achieved a change uh, for the sake of my people and the municipality. Well, dear Allah, for those people who don't uh, hear or uh, knows uh, or know dear Allah, it is a city in the center of the Jordan Valley, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the Jordan Valley uh, is well known uh, as it is in the basin of the Jordan uh, uh, River. Uh, well, this city has about 60,000 uh, residents uh, with a high uh, percent of unemployment, uh, which reaches somehow 33%. This means that we have, uh, we are in a needy community with uh, that suffering uh, poverty. But, uh, uh, and it's well known for uh, uh, agriculture, and most of the land uh, in uh, Deir Al in my town uh, uh, is used or is cultivi cultivated. Uh, uh, about 80,000 uh, hectares are cultivated. And we have some light uh, uh, industry. Also, my town is attracted by a little, a little bit uh, tourism, uh, uh, attracted by Tel Deir Allah, which is well known in history. Uh, it's about uh, 10,000 years old. Uh, and uh, we have uh, every year investigators and a delegation of archaeologists working uh, uh, there. Also, I'll tell you something uh, about its climate. It's very hot in summer, and it is <coughs> moderate in winter, and it is rich of uh, fresh oxygen. Uh, and so uh, uh, people, even from Jordan, comes to it in, uh, to enjoy the winter there. Now, uh, let's come to the water resources uh, and challenges and my city, and uh, let's uh, give, you, uh, give you a brief about how water is provided for my town. Uh, well, uh, we, uh, the, the water used for drinking, sorry, the, the uh, water used for domestic purposes or for drinking is provided by uh, uh, Jordan uh, Water Authority, which uh, works under the umbrella of the Ministry of uh, Water and Irrigation, while uh, water used for irrigation and for agricultural purposes uh, is provided by Jordan Valley uh, Authority through uh, Kana King Abdullah Canal. As I said, uh, uh, 80,000 hectares are cultivated, so 70% of our water is is, is used in a cultivation, which, while the, this percent is high, while we live also in a, a patient of scarcity, and we, we suffer a shortage of water for both domestic and agricultural purposes. And here, in, uh, uh, we had uh, a, a small plant water, wastewater treatment plant called Tel El Mantah in my town, and there, Allah, uh, 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 this uh, water treated was constructed in 2004 uh, by a donation from the Canadian uh, government. It handles about 400 cubic meters a day, uh, but it is uh, uh, it's not utilized enough for uh, to be used in, uh, in farm irrigation. I mean the retreated water because uh, farmers don't trust. Uh, the water that is recreated, and so uh, some of the interventions of the enter of the our master plan for the Jordan River rehabilitation focused on uh, this uh, uh, opinion, and that we uh, hope that these opinions and uh, points of views could be changed. So we have to concentrate here that we have a suffer of uh, shortage of water, uh, which is a main challenge uh, uh, for us. One of the greatest hazards to water quality in Dar Allah is the dump site. And this dump site is used by five municipalities in the Jordan Valley. And it's in, in great need of modernization because it depends on old and primitive uh, methods to uh, 
deal with uh, leakage and the shit, which we, ma we, af we are afraid of that might affect uh, and will affect the, our groundwater and uh, the River Jordan. So pollution and in particular the impact on the Jordan River is the another challenge. And so this d dump site or this, uh, 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 this dump site needs to be upgraded and modernized uh, to uh, stop affecting our ground uh, water. I'll finish. Also, relating to uh, th this, uh, I'd like to say that the development of tourism of the, and of the ledger uh, facilities and there are hindered by the lack of enough or sufficient water infrastructure. And as you see in the picture, some of little kids are playing in the mud while one of the pipes uh, uh, is broken or damaged in a way or another. No. This is Yana. Okay, okay, it comes. Uh, as you see in the, the, uh, in the slide, uh, we have little kids playing in the mud while uh, someone uh, 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 has damaged or broken the, one of the pipes that uh, 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 take water to, uh, per, uh, to houses. And uh, this is widespread because we, had, uh, we have an old uh, network uh, uh, system that needs to be upgraded and uh, renewed. So water, oh, water, uh, old water networks and the lack of water infrastructure is another challenge for my city. Now I'm talking about some suggested solutions. Yeah, we are working in a number of fronts to improve the access to sufficient qualities of high uh, quality water for uh, our sustainable uh, development. Uh, uh, the worst water and uh, the, the worst water uh, treated by the worst water treatment plant in Tal al uh, is uh, costly in the long term, so investment can be in maintaining and upgrading this uh, plant uh, and to be reused uh, uh, in farming uh, at the first and then for drinking purposes. Also, the most important thing is to create and to have a sewage uh, system network, at least by modernizing and upgrading the existing uh, wastewater treatment plant to have a, a nearby small village to be connected to the plant. And then we, uh, we must connect uh, uh, the, the Deir Allah and we should also have uh, other plants in other parts of the valley to have all the communities there connected to uh, wastewater treatment plants. Also, we are focusing on the rehabilitation of the Jordan uh, Valley River to increase its flu and reduce its salinity uh, to their original levels, will, uh, with, which will result in an increase in biodiversity, improving the land equality for recreation and resilience to climate change. Also, we are concentrating and we re-emphasize here the working in collaboration with others on the Jordan Valley Master Plan, which is vital and important uh, for my city if it is to maintain and improve its uh, relations with its water resources. I'd like to talk about the uh, Jordan uh, River Master Plan in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell you that my city has been involved in all the public hearings, meetings, and in reviewing the national Jordanian and the regional uh, master uh, plan for the Lower Jordan River Valley, which is, I think, this plan is a great step forward for the st sustainability of the valley as we do not cooperate on the regional level. We will not see the change we want uh, uh, to see. And here I'd like to emphasize that there are responsibility, and me personally, are uh, committed to the Lower uh, Jordan River Valley Master Plan 
and we will participate in the coming national and the regional uh, meetings for the plan. And here, I'd like to extend my special thanks uh, for the efforts that the Jordan Valley Authority, uh, in collaboration with the ECOPIS, are uh, doing uh, for in preparing, reviewing, uh, and developing this master uh, plan. And I think this uh, plan should be encouraged and supported. And uh, personally, I'll do what I, uh, I can or all my best or whatever can be required to let this plan succeed and go ahead. And I hope that my, our governments uh, also should have uh, uh, an emphasis or give a hand in having this master plan to go ahead. Finally, I am very pleased to participate in such useful, helpful, fruitful conference and I'd like to express my deep and warm greetings again for uh, the organizers and the supporters of uh, uh, the conference, and also uh, the, the, uh, and to thank them again for this distinguished opportunity to meet uh, such distinguished mayors. Uh, it is the first time to meet with mayors from uh, America and Canada, and we ex uh, 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 sharing experiences. I myself got uh, and learned a lot uh, from uh, them and I, I, I hope that we will be in touch and we meet again in the coming years and but we have something done in our ground for the sake of our people. Thank you again. Well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to Joel and Rachel for putting on this historic uh, event and uh, I know from today and, and when I go home tomorrow that uh, I will have the, the honor of uh, having some new friends, so that's something that I, I cherish, and it's uh, been quite an experience uh, to experience this, to, to talk to fellow mayors and hear their uh, trials and tribulations across uh, the, uh, the large pond. So I'm here to speak today just a little bit about uh, what we're doing here, here in Kenlaws. I'm just gonna spin this around here. So we're main, mainly a, an agricultural community as well. And, uh, and I also have the honor this year of being the warden of Bruce County, which is eight municipalities uh, made up together and, and uh, we represent 65,000 people. And Bruce County as a whole has about 2,400 kilometers of shoreline. So we, uh, we're fairly large that way, so. <clears throat> So here in Kinloss, uh, we, we're about 7,000 people. Economic base is basically agriculture and, and agriculture services and, and uh, obviously tourism. Uh, we're, we're actually a fairly young municipality, but we're, we have a lot more seniors moving back into the area because of our lake. Uh, that, that sure draws a lot of people back home that have moved away. So uh, we are fairly young uh, with an average age. The types of agriculture is, is livestock and uh, cropping with uh, wheat and soybeans, corn are, are our main, obviously, uh, crops that are grown. But what we've seen over the last few years is uh, factory farms are popping up. The, the, the small uh, mom and dad pop farms are kind of gone now. And so we have large corporations that are forming that are moving into, uh, into our community and buying up land. And uh, what's unique about here in Kinloss as well is that we have approximately 700 Mennonite and Amish that live in our uh, eastern end of our township. So it's, it's quite diverse. At one end along the lakeshore, we have million dollar cottages. And then inland, we have uh, people that aren't even using hydro. So it's, it's pretty interesting to be the mayor and have those dynamics within our community, but it's very interesting. So, and, and taking a drive to the eastern part of our communities like going back in time 200 years with the horse and buggy and and these people are drawing uh, their water from drilled well, or sorry uh, dug wells and windmills so it's quite quite unique so water resources we uh, along our, our lake shore uh, we have approximately well, actually five we have another drilled well that we just drilled so six wells that uh, form our drinking water system along our lakeshore and then inland in Ripley and Lucknow we have uh, municipal wells and uh, I am the representative for the municipality here in Kinloss, Kincardine and Saugeen Shores on the Source Water Protection Committee. I don't know how many people are familiar with the Clean Water Act that the Ontario government has passed but 
that's a committee I've been sitting on for eight years now, and we almost have the, the source water plan ready to submit to the Minister of Energy for, or sorry, the Minister of Environment for final reading and, and passing the, uh, the legislation. So obviously we've had our concerns, much like uh, my fellow mayors, that uh, when we get together at conferences and, and share some of the issues that we have, uh, we have the algal blooms, uh, just like everybody else, and obviously that causes a lot of consternation with regards to our uh, lakefront owners and all that, but we have a program in place where we uh, have an algae harvester that goes up and down the beach, cleans uh, the beaches when need, needed, usually about twice twice a, uh, a week uh, when the water levels have been down. But now the water levels, I know Mayor Dickert mentioned that earlier, that the water levels are going up. And uh, you know, I hear from my friends in the Middle East, the water levels obviously in the Jordan River going down. And I have residents complaining along the lakeshore that they're worried the water's gonna get too high and take out their decks and stuff like that. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's, I will share that with my uh, friends. For, for sure. Another thing we do at the municipality is, uh, you notice that chart to the bottom is, uh, obviously that's the, the, the lake levels, and then that, uh, the one to the right up there is the wellhead protection area of uh, where we are going to have to try and protect that drinking water. So obviously within the source water protection plan, there's certain activities that we will not allow as a municipality. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea. Here's something that uh, obviously we have a lot of uh, environmental concerns in our municipalities. So what we did years ago is we started a, an organization called the Prine River Watershed Initiative, which was a committee of council. And from there it has morphed into a full-time employee that uh, runs this program. So you can see some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're, we've got some projects that uh, just last year we finished was a $112,000 project to keep uh, the soils from getting into the tributaries and then obviously down into uh, the lake. So they're, they're carrying large uh, amounts of nitrates and phosphates. So uh, now the one, the second one down to the left there, we have a program called uh, the Here in Kinloss Community Septic Inspection Program. So council passed mandatory septic inspections uh, eight years ago in the municipality. And what we did, was um, we, we put it right on their tax bill, $55, and you can see it as a line item on their tax bill that every year they, they pay towards the whole program. So over the last eight years, uh, we have spent over a million dollars in our septic reinspection program is paid out of our, our taxpayers' uh, pockets. Not a nickel came from the province or the federal government. So, and again, I'm standing here today promoting this because Communication and outreach is, is how you get these projects done. And I meet, there's three uh, beach associations that I meet with every summer. And uh, it's quite heated sometimes, I can tell you. Um, we're never doing enough, I guess, but that's, that's but anyways, uh, so what we started doing, we, we have these things called septic socials. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I actually hosted one at my house and because I'm on a septic as well. So what happens is we bring the, the truck in uh, to pump out the, the septage. And so you open up your lid and bring everybody around, have a look into the tank. And uh, Before or after dinner? <laughs> after breakfast. Um, so what we do, uh, we have a little table set up outside and we have, if, if anybody knows that we're very famous for Tim Hortons in Canada, so we have chocolate Timbit holes and we serve apple juice. <laughs> that, that is what we do at our septic social. So you have to bring a little bit of humor into trying to outreach to your people. So it's gone over very well. Uh, and and we, if you have a chance, go on our website and you can see that we have a little a uh, little place in there that we call love the septic you're with. So, and it's, it's, quite, it's quite remarkable because we have a lot of younger people that fall on, or follow it with uh, Twitter and they send in these unbelievable comments about septic systems. So, so we have about 3,000 septic systems in, uh, here in Kinloss and we're down to the final 50 
and those people are just, they don't want us on their land basically, but we do have authority and uh, if we have to, we will use uh, police to go on and finish off those septic systems we're that committed. So uh, it's, the program's had awesome uptake from our residents to say the least. So we're very proud of that program and I think we are one of maybe two or three in all of Ontario that have mandatory septic uh, reinspection program. And we just signed in to do uh, a second uh, year of it. So when the septic system inspection's done, the, we have a, an inspector comes out and actually GPS is the septic system. We, we do up a report, shows where your septic tank is, your weeping bed, and you'll see it on a, on a map from Google Earth with uh, your coordinates using the GPS. So then we have a database to know where all the septics are. So, but through this program too, we also found uh, people were using old rain barrels. There was in cases no septic uh, tanks whatsoever. So obviously uh, with this program, we've changed over a lot of uh, septic systems. So anyways, it's been a, a very worthwhile program for, to say the least. And uh, just to end it up, uh, the Pine River Watershed is just an amazing organization. They have uh, planted almost 300,000 trees. They've put up ca uh, cattle crossings from cattle to get in the streams. And uh, so it's been a, a really good program. So. I won't take any more time and be happy to field some questions a little bit later. So thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Ron Molho. I'm uh, the chief engineer of the Kinero Drainage Authority. I'm here on behalf of uh, Yossi Vardy, uh, the mayor of the uh, Jordan Valley uh, uh, Regional Council. The Jordan uh, Valley Regional Council is, uh, we have uh, 22 towns and about 14,000 uh, residents. Our main uh, issues uh, is agriculture, fishing, tourism, and water. Um, the water is about 30% uh, of the use in, in all Israel. Uh, until these days, now it's uh, decreasing because of the desalination uh, plants in uh, Israel. So there is a uh, thought that uh, um, uh, more water will, uh, will be at the Jordan River. I will talk about it later. Uh, this area is uh, very clean and uh, because we don't have uh, any uh, industrial uh, that have uh, pollution. Uh, we have uh, lots of uh, tourists uh, come from all over the world because, as you know, it's very uh, famous for the Christianity, uh, the Jordan River, uh, the, um, uh, the important uh, sites of the Christianity is the uh, Yardenid baptism, so baptism site and Tabcha, the fish and loaves uh, miracle area. Uh, not all of you knows, but uh, Tel Ubadia is the first uh, Palestinian uh, archaeological site that uh, uh, tells us uh, the, uh, the earliest uh, human immigration uh, out of the of the human beings out out of Africa is in our region. This is uh, the baptismal site in the uh, Jordan. Uh, we've seen it before, the, the partial part of uh, the lower Jordan, that the first 11 kilometers are uh, in, in the Israeli uh, uh, side, and uh, after that it become a border between uh, Israel and Jordan, and after that uh, between uh, Jordan and Palestine. So we are responsible for the first 11 kilometers that uh, both sides of the Jordan are, are in Israel. This is the first kilometer that is clean. It's, it's clean water, it's fresh water out of the uh, Sea of Galilee. And this is the only place that you can uh, baptism uh, safely. <laughs> About uh, 800,000 people every year come to make a round over here. And it's very nice, it's a very spiritual place. Uh, 
Okay, this is was the, the the nice things, and now for the other things, we have some uh, so some problems like uh, high water table. I've to, I've said that uh, the, most of the people, uh, most of the area is agricultural area, and uh, 70 years ago, when the first uh, pioneers came uh, to this regional. To this region, uh, they tried to make some agriculture, but they didn't succeed because of the high uh, water table. And uh, I had, the, I have the honor to to meet uh, the the engineer that started uh, 45 years ago to make the uh, groundwater um, uh, drainage system that uh, uh, let down the, all the water table. And uh, because of that, it, uh, all the agriculture can be uh, raised. And but we're, like the regional council, I think uh, nowadays is also uh, stuck yeah, with the uh, maintenance of this uh, uh, system that costs a lot, and um, it's a, it's a problem. Like uh, because uh, all the uh, all, all this uh, amount of money is, is come from the residents, it's not come from the government. And uh, of course, uh, the major problem that uh, we talked about it uh, at the last two days, about the Re uh, Jordan River environmental crisis. Uh, this is a big issue that uh, going on for about uh, 60 years. And uh, I'm I'm on this business just for ten years, and I don't know how how come that uh, all the residents in this area have uh, enough patience to to take it, to take it for sixty years, and uh, not shouting uh, before. But I came I came uh, uh, I got into this business in ten years ago, and and then. Uh, we moved to, uh, it was like uh, we started uh, to talk, uh, um, like uh, our voice was louder. And, uh, and somehow uh, the government uh, it also uh, take care, notice that uh, there is a problem over here. And uh, they started to to give us some money for make uh, plans and uh, and after some years, before about five years, we finished the the master plan of the northern part. It's not the same master plan that we've talked uh, before. It's like it's a local master plan of the uh, uh, northern part of the 11 kilometers and. The, the thing is, uh, uh, we thought that if we wait for everything, like uh, all the political issues between Israel and Jordan, and Israel and Palestine, and Israel and Israel, uh, we wouldn't make it. And uh, we decided to go, to, go, to go on, to go through, um, with what we had in our pocket. And... Um, we, we, we started uh, two years ago uh, the, the, the ecological rehabilitation of the, of the Jordan River. And this is uh, symbolic what, what I'm showing here, but of course uh, the things that we can, we can change is uh, the structural foundation that uh, uh, was changed uh, about 100 years ago by uh, Rutenberg. We've talked about him uh, today. We've mentioned his name. That uh, was the engineer, the Russian engineer that uh, made uh, uh, the hydroelectrical plant in Naharaim. And he changed this river uh, dramatically. Uh, and nowadays, when there is no hydroelectrical uh, 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 plant, we have uh, we think that we have the opportunity to change it back. 
Um, and now we're working at the Structural Foundation, as I said, and um, we collect uh, seeds. For three years, we collect uh, seeds, uh, all like uh, all the refugees' seeds that uh, all the ve from the vegetation that uh, originally was uh, belongs to this area, and we planted it, and. We have, uh, like, we, we succeeded, uh, like, to take care about about two, two and a half kilometers, and uh, it's it's a good uh, point of view that, uh, first of all, that you, you, it can be done. It can be done by uh, local uh, forces, and um, I think that uh, when governmental uh, 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 People can come and come and see, and uh, they are really like it. And also, uh, many people from outside and uh, ecologists, they come and see, uh, come to see that, and it's it's kind of a miracle. It's kind of a miracle what's happening there. I, I think you all should uh, come and see, and uh, I guess you will enjoy it. Mm. As I said, uh, we are focusing in uh, the ecological rehabilitation. Usually uh, in Israel, when they speak about uh, rehabilitation, all the time the, the, the picture is uh, parks and parks and parks. But uh, we are focusing in the, rehabilitation, the ecological rehabilitation because we think that this is the base. If we do it right, then, uh, then the, the 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 next phase will be the the uh, touristic uh, touristic uh, the, the human uh, access to the river will be much different, and uh, it would be like it would be healthy. Um, so we we as I said we we change the morphology of the earth of the. Uh, uh, moving it from sewage canal to flowing river. Uh, we recreate the river meanders. This is the most important thing I, th I think that we, should, we did because uh, uh, the, the works that they done a uh, hundred years ago, they made a shortcut uh, beyond the, the meanders. The, and this is very important for the uh, right uh, position of the river. And of course, we made back the habitat and the uh, vegetation. And uh, mm, yeah, okay. And if we think of the of, uh, of the of of what's going on, uh, not only in our side, like to to think about the shared dream together with the Palestinian and the Jordanian. So uh, we want to unlock the economic potential, of course, the tourism and the fishing, including cooperation uh, with uh, our friends uh, on the south. And uh, we want to change, again, also the, the, the position of the river. And also the Yarmouk River is, uh, is coming, inside the, the, come inside the river. Uh, the Jordan River, and to to provide human access to the river that nowadays uh, uh, it's a border, and it's full of mines, and it's very dangerous. And uh, the the dream of a, of a, of the peace park that uh, I think uh, Eco Peace uh, lead that. Is, uh, uh, is very important, and we're supporting it, of course. And uh, we want to thank you all for being with us and uh, sharing uh, your knowledge uh, here in the uh, uh, United States and Canada. And of course, uh, I want to thank uh, Rachel and Nicole and all of you that uh, supported us. Thank you.
Good afternoon, you're tough guys. Uh, well, uh, first uh, we'll have to talk about my community. I'll try to do it maybe differently. And uh, with pictures, I'll try to uh, introduce you to, uh, well, projects that we have realized and that have changed the, the way we were developing the city. Well, first, where is the mechanism? Okay, let's see if it's worked. So, this is where we live. A dot on this earth. You see Salaberita Valley Field. And then, uh, make it closer. Mm -hmm. So I should... This is a second uh, picture, well, you see the Great Lakes and you see a part of the St. Lawrence uh, moving away and heading to the, uh, to the sea. Well, where is the stars? Uh, the star is Salaverita Valley Field, but uh, what I'd like to point out on uh, this picture is you could imagine that the, uh, the Great Lakes are uh, the heart of a system and the St. Lawrence is uh, uh, his artery. So let's suppose that the artery clogs, so something will happen certainly on, uh, on the Great Lakes. So we are then part of the St. Lawrence and the Great Lakes are part of the same system, of a big system. And we have to take care of it. Well, closer, while well, you see that the Salaberry, the Valley Field, or what used to call it the Valley Field, is surrounded by water. We're on an island uh, and uh, while the history of Valley Field is, uh, well, has been developed around the, uh, around the water, our city is 140 years old. But before uh, this, the age of 140, there was agricultural, agricultural land. There was an occupation for 40 or 50 years uh, before we have created, not we, but uh, those we who came before me, they create. Uh, Valley Field, but before agriculture, this area was uh, uh, a zone of transit for the uh, First Nation. So you can see that on both sides of the uh, of Celebrity the Valley Field, you have a, a big lake. Uh, the inlet is coming from uh, the bottom of the picture, but the inlet is Lake St. Francis, and the outlet is uh, uh, Lake St. Louis. And then Lake St. Louis and Lake St. Francis are extension of the uh, St. Lawrence River. And then uh, while there was, there is a slight difference in, in terms of level between the two lakes, uh, there's a 80 feet of difference. It's lower on St. Louis, Lake St. Louis are, and higher than in Saint, on St. Francis, uh, St. Francis Lake. And this is the reason why this area has been uh, a zone or a sector for development potential, uh, electrical, hydroelectrical potential uh, to develop. And it's been at the beginning, the beginning of the city, well, it starts with uh, industries needing water and needing energy. And uh, while well, the first industries uh, that appeared in, this, in the city were mills and uh, uh, cotton filling, uh, cotton filling uh, industries, they were all coming from Scotland, and those uh, English people, they knew how to master the water, and then they built, uh, at that time, hydroelectric plant, and then they served for a while uh, these hydroelectric plants. You see from the uh, air a part of the city. Well, as I said to you, uh, the city is surrounded by water. There's water anywhere. Uh, any place you are on the in the city, well, you can look at the water. Any street you are, any house you are, you will see somewhere uh, a large piece of, uh, of water. Then in, the develop in developing the, the city, transportation uh, was a need for, to serve the industry. So uh, before 19, uh, the, the 19th century, they, uh, the builders decided to uh, build 
a big canal, navigation canal leak while uh, making a link between Lake St. Francis and uh, Lake St. Louis. And well, on the picture you see what's remaining a part of the remaining canal, which was crossing the uh, downtown area of the city. The city is 41,000 people. It's uh, what we used to call a center city uh, with all services, education, health, uh, government offices, uh, justice court. Well, it's the capital of a region. And then it's one third urban city with industries and with the services, the uh, public services, and two thirds uh, of agricultural. It, the dimension of the city is 115, 115 square kilometers or 50 uh, square miles. We have a port, a city port. Well, I'll show you first the other section of the, uh, of the uh, central canal, the old canal. Uh, well, they closed the canal in 1901. And then for, uh, from that time, they closed partly or they, uh, uh, they uh, built uh, streets and houses on the other section, with, uh, on uh, one section of the, uh, uh, of the canal. So the only uh, part downtown was uh, 2.4 kilometers. And for a while, for practically 100 years, uh, it has uh, become a, a swamp in some, in some way. No activities on, on the canal, uh, nothing to, be, uh, to use it. And it was also a part of, the, of our industrial heritage. So what we have decided many years ago, 10 years ago, we have decided that we should change. Well, there was no, well, how would I would say, people were not too proud of having such kind of canal uh, within their uh, uh, downtown, finally, and they wanted, to, they wanted us to change it or to fill it or do something, uh, so, something else so that they could be proud of their city. So we decided to do something, and it's in the next picture. We decided to reopen the canal to the navigation, well, the part of the canal remaining, and then we built the inside City Marina, that changed the, uh, uh, the, uh, the image of the city, that changed uh, the orientation of the city, and tourism started to come back to the, to the city, and they saw that we, we could do something. So, in a uh, little part of what we invest money, with the city invests money with the, the provincial and the federal government, and finally, with a bit of seed money, we realize uh, such transformation, and then we have we did more, uh, finally. Uh, this swamp became a sector or uh, a place where we could hold uh, a light, a sound, and a water show. Uh, so you have a part of this show that we, that we are presenting every summer, uh, every night. And while well, the first year, 45 or 50, thousand people came to see the show at night. It was free. It's downtown. And then uh, the year after, we doubled the uh, participation of uh, the population. And well, people around, surround, around uh, the area of Valley Field and people from Montreal and people from uh, anywhere in the province, they came to see the show. And that brought uh, proudness to, uh, uh, the, to our population. We made other transformation to that canal. Uh, we transfer a bridge. We have a, an old bridge, an old historic bridge, and we decide that we could revamp the bridge, and this is what we did with lights and uh, another with sounds, and uh, well, we link this new bridge, we rebuild the bridge, the bridge, and we link it to the uh, uh, marketplace. And finally, this is another area where we have uh, where we have a lot of people coming uh, every, every week then. A final picture that is quite interesting is the, uh, we have, we hold every year regattas, uh, motorized regattas in Valley Field. We have been uh, having, uh, well, such kind of experience, such, such activity during the last 75 years. And to celebrate the 75th anniversary, we decided to build a 
large statue and uh, une oeuvre d'art where, where we start with, uh, and we uh, hire artists. And so they build a statue which represents Neptune, which is, who is the, the god of fresh water and sea. And then this statue is just at the entrance of the bay, of the St. Francis Bay, and then it, it's looking at the site where the, uh, the regattas are, are held every, uh, every year. So another piece that is related to water, and uh, which shows that uh, finally with water we can do something else than, uh, something else than, well, doing nothing. Uh, well, these are nice pictures, but uh, we have issues. We have uh, some problems that we have to deal with. Uh, first, we are in that in industrial uh, industrial city, uh, living living with the uh, uh, chemical industry. So there are a lot of risks. We are dealing. The city has created. A, uh, mixed committee industry and, and the city uh, to deal with the risk. So, and to show that if we have risk, we have solution to the risk. And this, uh, this committee works. It's been working for the last, for the last five years. And uh, we have forced the, uh, uh, the industry to uh, present their risk to the population. And population has agreed that while well, we are a population at risk, a city at risk, but we know that there are solutions to those risks. Water consumption, we are surrounded by water. And for sure, people think that uh, there's no water missing anywhere, but our infrastructure are limited. So we have introduced the uh, uh, meter, the metering of water, uh, at the level of the industry and commerce, and, uh, and we uh, introduced a new tarification. What it has done within three years after the implementation of the uh, meters, uh, the reduction of uh, the water consumption by the industry was 40%. So you can imagine that the industry were, <coughs> well, they were not paying too much, but they know that how, what is the price of the water. Renewal of infrastructure, we are, are an old city, not as old as, uh, as uh, well, those cities in, uh, in the Middle East, but uh, we have to replace and rebuild, and we have start with uh, the uh, governmental program uh, to rebuild the infrastructure and reduce the, the leaks in the water system. So investment are progressing. Protection of wetlands, so we have, we must control the storm water uh, runoff. So we are uh, now protecting our wetlands that are taking care of the runoff. And we are revamping the, well, the system of captation of uh, the storm water in the old city. So that will help us to uh, eliminate danger of, of flood. And finally, well, the big thing is, well, to control the growth of the city. It's uh, with the, uh, with the construction, the recent construction of a highway. So we're related by uh, the seaway uh, to, the rest of the, to the rest of the world, but by the, uh, by the highway to uh, the, uh, well, the network of, of highways of the, of the country and of North America. So that brings uh, some more problem, good problem because we grow, but uh, if we grow too fast, well, problem could occur. Well, this is it. This is what I wanted to tell you about our city. And then it's time for somebody else. <laughs> I would uh, to speak a little English because uh, I don't speak uh, very well. I'm very happy to be with you. Uh, I'm very happy to be in Chicago. But uh, I said, because I don't speak English very well as uh, my friend. I, uh, he translate to me. I'm uh, uh, Hassan Jeremy. I'm the mayor of the Zbidat Village Council. I'm deputy of the uh, Joint Service Council in uh, Jericho, in uh, the Palestinian side. Uh, I want to thank uh, Okobis because they uh, get me here. I don't know is it right or not, but uh, in English, uh, to be here. 
to, to speak to you about our uh, region and Palestine and Jordan and, uh, and Israel and hear you what are you uh, give us out to, to learn from you all. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Richard. Thank you. I thank the university. Thank my uh, friend, the mayors, uh, Dr. Uh, Saad Abu Hamour. Thank you. We learned from you uh, many, many, many. Uh, I thank all of you here. Now I speak in Arabic. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> يعني أنا من إزبيدات إزبيدات هي عشيرة كانت في بير السبع وهجرت وسكنت وأسست بلد سمتها إزبيدات في منطقة وادي الأردن. Um, I am from Zbidat, uh, which was an established tribe of, of consists of Palestinian refugees who uh, initially uh, were living in Bir Sheva, which is south of Palestine. Uh, after 1948, they sought uh, refuge in uh, uh, east west of the Jordan River, which uh, and initiated a village which they called Zbedat. صح يا إذا أنت من شايفينا بالصورة هي بلد صغيرة ولكن تكتظ بالسكان هي أكثر بلد تكتظ في السكان في في فلسطين من رفح إلى جنين يعني أكثر اكتظاظا من المخيمات الفلسطينية. It is. Uh, it, true that it is a small uh, village, but it consists of a very large amount of Palestinian population. And it is um, uh, and um, so it is uh, in the eastern strip of the West Bank, stretches along the Dead Sea in the south to be sent, and uh, uh, from the Jordan River east, 15 kilometers westward. And uh, he is involved in other 18 other uh, organizations. سكان المحافظة اليوم محافظة تاريخ والأغوار اللي منها الزبدات حوالي يعني ثمانية وخمسين إلى ستين ألف نسمة. and the population is nearly fifty eight to يعني من ألف إلى ألفين نسمة. زبدات village is nearly one thousand eight hundred to two thousand بعيش في منطقة الأغوار أكثر من يعني أحداشر ألف مستوطن. In the valleys alone, there are nearly eleven thousand Israeli settlers. في معلومة مش مكتوبة في الورق بس إحنا يعني الأغوار على فكرة تطفو على بحر من الماء ولكن إحنا كفلسطينيين عطشانين. So the valleys they are over. Uh, the, the water near the water, even though there is, exists that Jordanian River, yet there are still thirsty people. They have one of the biggest. Uh, water resources uh, that are unutilized. But that container hasn't been filled because of the drainage of the water. And now, instead of uh, providing benefits, it, it Because of the overpumping of the water, and now it's filled with saltiness, which is actually a side effect instead of a benefit. We have two problems one with the drinking water, and two with the sewage. 
أنا ما يعني إيه ثلاث قرى بيعطونا يعني بناخذ من الاسرائيليين او بيعطونا بيبيعونا الاسرائيليين شركة مكروت من 7 ل 14 متر مكعب في الساعة لثلاث قرى عدد سكانهن اكثر من 7000 نسمة. They buy their own water from three uh, from the from Israel and uh, كم من متر مربع؟ كم من متر من 7 ل 14 متر بالساعة. 7 to 14 meters per hour. لثلاث قرى. For three villages. وهذا الشيء يعني لا يكفي علما انه المستوطنين اللي بيعيشوا في في نفس المنطقه بياخذوا اضعاف 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 الكميه اللي بيبيعونا اياها المستوطنين وهي مياه اصلا فلسطينيه. And this amount that's given to them is inadequate. While at the same time, the, settler, the Israeli settlers around have sufficient and even more sufficient water for them. And even though these waters are originally Palestinian. Uh, and the and the, and the, he um, continues and tells about the problems with the sewers or the sewage. Even though there is a uh, two thousand around two thousand population sitting on only six acres or hectares. سبب إن مشكلة بيئية هذا الاقتصاد لأنه ما عندنا شبكات صرف صحي فكل بيت بيعمل حفرة امتصاصية أمام البيت منها سببت أمراض للناس أمراض معدية. ومنها تلوث للبيئة وتلوث للمياه الجوفية. And this lack of sewage system and lack of irrigation for water, there is no sewage network. Village cesspits lead to groundwater, which leads to the contamination of the groundwater uh, of the groundwater, and the poor water supply and deteriorating deteriorating pipes. All are effects of this. Uh, في عام 2000 بالمساعدة اليو اس ايد من خلال المؤسسة انيرا وعملنا برزنتيشن للصرف الصحي في القرية ولليوم قدمنا احنا من ال 2000 لسلطة المياه الفلسطينية لليوم ما اجانا رد عليه لانه اللجنة المشتركة الفلسطينية الاسرائيلية ما قبلت الإسرائيليين ما قبلوا الطلب لأنه صاحب القرار الرئيسي في اللجنة المشتركة هو الإسرائيليين والإسرائيليين ما قبلوا يرخصوا لنا المشروع. So with the help of the USAID and the owner organization, they have uh, uh, submitted a presentation for a, a solution for these waters, but uh, it, till today it has not been applied due to the to that the disagreement with the Israeli uh, um, policies. يعني أنا بدي شطيل عليكم عندنا مشكلة اللي هي بدنا تغيير ال 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 الخطوط الناقلة للشرب. They need change in the pipe water. والخطوط الناقلة لل ال 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 للري الزراعي. And irrigation pipes also. وهذا يتطلب المساعدة في الحصول على الموافقات من الطرف الإسرائيلي لأنه الطرف الإسرائيلي من ست من الألفين وعشرة لليوم اللجنة الفلسطينية الإسرائيلية ما اجتمعت. And all this needs agreement from the Israeli side, and this can't be applied unless the Israelis agree to this for all these solutions to take hand. وهذا نعكس سلبا على المواطن الفلسطيني علي أنا كمواطن يعني أنا مش قادر لأنه كمان الاتفاق أصله ربطنا أكثر من 200 متر ممنوع يعني لا تأخذ عليه تمويل ولا تأخذ عليه ترخيص فأنت بدك موافقة اللجنة المشتركة واللجنة المشتركة ما اجتمعت فأصبح كأنه أحنا ما اشتغلنا ولا شيء And this has affected negatively on their lives and uh, he calls for uh, an agreement and a participation from the Israeli side for this to take a uh, hand and uh, for this to be applied, basically. فمن خلالكم من خلال كل الناس من خلال كل اللي 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 الل
في إصدار ترخيص لتأهيل الأبار للزراعة لزيادة مياه الشرب للمواطنين في الأغوار لتأهيل شبكات الماء للشرب وللزراعة And this, and he uh, uh, asks from your excellencies if, for uh, to participate in an initiation of permits uh, for uh, to provide them with drinking water and uh, secure irrigation pipelines and such. Can I? Can I just go ahead? Help with the translation a little bit. I mean, one of the things that is really important to understand is that Spida has been um, requesting for permits for water, for irrigation, for domestic use, and for sanitation. They don't have sanitation projects. The Israeli, the Joint Water um, Commission committee, 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 that's Israeli-Palestinian. Uh, it's supposed to be meeting open in order to deal with the water issues because any water requirement that Palestinians need has to be approved by the Joint Water Committee and the Israelis have to approve it. If they do not approve it, they don't get it. So the Spedat has been requesting multiple times since 2000 actually. They have been requesting different things and they're, so their they're access to water, their access to um, sanitation pipeline, pipes and to irrigation water has been stuck because one, because you know, delays, but at the same time the Israelis have been vetoing all extra expenditure. So for example, one of the things is that all of the village has septic tanks. Nobody has really sanitation network, right? Um, Thank you, Doctor. He said because he will be in my village. He visit me in my village. <laughs> he know everything. <laughs> he know everything. يا سيدي أنا باجي بوك بس خدني أنا باجي بوك عياك الله على كل حال إن ذا نايت نو أي فينيش أي وود تو ثينك أول أول أوف يو جدعون دكتور نادر دكتور موقن أول ذا تيم بالستينيان جوردينيان إسرائيلي أول أوف يو Uh, I hope we uh, make something to our uh, uh, villages and countries and region. Thank you all. Uh, mayors and uh, their representatives, could you please uh, find a chair up here? I feel I've, I've stifled the discussion that was already starting. Um, so uh, thank you, Mayor, for that final presentation. And what what really struck me was the the I, I was listening to each presentation and I heard that the word tourism was mentioned uh, five out of six times and yet when we cannot satisfy basic needs and we can't address the basic right uh, to live uh, as a as a human being um, we can't be thinking about things like tourism yet we can't be thinking about the way that water underpins. Uh, those parts of our economy because we haven't addressed some of those basic human needs yet. So I know we're going to get into that in our discussion. Um, I am going to take prerogative and ask the first question, and then I'll, we'll open it up. Mayors, I don't have to tell, I don't have to tell you this, but uh, if you need to jump in and cut each other off and discuss matters with your fellow mayors, please don't hesitate to do so, uh, or cut me off if you need to. But my first question is, when I think about mayors, elected officials, uh, especially local ones, I think about constituencies and voters and people who you hear from who tell you what the issues are that they care about. How do you hear about uh, water as an issue from your constituents? Um, who's talking? What are they telling you? And uh, is, that, is that enough to really motivate you to act on water in your community? 
You're talking to me? Anybody. <laughs> well, w w we, live, we live with water, so any issue uh, of the city is in relation with the uh, uh, with water issues, finally. And uh, we are, uh, well, if there's a problem coming and if the population, uh, any constituents uh, uh, requesting or having a problem uh, with uh, distribution or with distribution of water, with collection of water, or any problem uh, in our area, it's always the the community, and it's it's always the uh, city management or the uh, uh, political authorities that are uh, in contact with the population, and it's always like that. Any uh, well, any problem in our areas, and you could ask uh, uh, all the mayor, even the uh, the problems, the provincial problems and federal problems, it comes through the uh, uh, political. Uh, uh, the pol well, political team of, of the city and the management team of the city. So we're in direct connection with the population and so we have to deal with all the problems, finally. Yeah, I'd like uh, to say in my, in my city, uh, frankly, uh, all the citizens in terms of the mayor knows this uh, problem because the, 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 this is a, a national problem. We all Jordanians uh, uh, suffer water scarcity and uh, the, all the officials, the, uh, 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 the, the citizens uh, uh, feel uh, and have the, 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 uh, that there, there is a, a problem. But if you talk about uh, some uh, accident events related to uh, some uh, people, yeah, uh, we, we have directories uh, in every community related to our municipality, and every citizen can go there and uh, point out his problem. And uh, we, we, when we reach it, we are trying to solve it with uh, 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 other directories and uh, our uh, uh, staff. But uh, uh, all citizens in my city uh, know that there is a problem and uh, uh, know that there is a water shortage and need uh, problems but what we need but we, we we want to build up is that to have enough awareness a public awareness that the results will be uh, uh, harmful and the impacts will uh, uh, affect our, our environment uh, 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 if we don't have uh, uh, if we don't work on the solutions that we uh, uh, suggested thank you uh, me uh, in Zbidat and Palestine, everyone know uh, Oslo Agreement. And after, uh, which they suffering from, they have went water, uh, they know every word in, in, in this agreement in the, in, in the water. Uh, when they ask, me, they ask himself, <laughs> because me and him <laughs> in the same uh, thing in the in the uh, water. But today, they know what I doing here. They know they want from me. This is my work, not the agreement. This is my work to to help to to uh, to. Uh, uh, if you are in the English, البحث عن ال نبحث عن كل شخص أو كل مؤسسة أو كل مجال إنه نقدر نحصل فيه على نقطة مية للمواطن الفلسطيني. So to find out um, any way through people through organizations how we can um, get more get water. وإن شاء الله إنه في بوجودنا في مثل هذه المؤتمرات إنه إحنا بنقدر نحصل إلى للمواطن ونعمل كلنا بالعمل المشترك بتزيد قوتنا. And hopefully with initiatives like this we can um, grow and also help out you know help out people and work together and. So Joel, to your question, uh, for the constituents we're one stop shopping at uh, in here in Kinloss anyways because. The Great Lakes are governed by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada, then along the near shore, and our beaches are governed by the Ministry of Natural Resources. So our constituents come to us for all of those problems. So then we try to do what we can as, as a municipality, uh, as small as we are, to try to address some of those issues. 
let me, I, I think I got the question, I got to replace a context, so I'm sorry, but I think I get the question is what do the constituents think of this? Uh, they don't care as long as they won't get water, right? I mean, how many of you here were really seriously concerned about what was happening in Toledo and how it affect you here? We have one man, maybe two, okay. Well. <laughs> so the, the reality is this, until you have your water turned off and you actually can't get it, that's the only time that you get upset and concerned about it, right? And that's the problem. That's the problem with America. We, we drink, we don't drink water like this, which we should be doing. We drink water out of a bottle that's plastic that's not regulated at all, so you don't even know what you're getting, and then we only re recycle 10% of that, those bottles. So um, we had a, uh, at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, I offered something that would get us all liability uh, lawsuits and it would cost us trillions of dollars, but I said, why don't we just for one hour, one day, all agree we're gonna turn off all our water and not tell anybody, <laughs> just because. Because the reality is the public takes this for granted. And until Toledo happens more than once, and by the way, it happened in Canada too, until Toledo happens more than once, nobody cares. Because you can get water and until you're, you're starving for it, you don't care. We have to make this an issue. These mayors are dealing with this every day. We don't, we look out at this and we go, hey, what, what's the big deal, right? So until we make this an issue, and I, and I push that and impress that upon you young people, until we start making this an issue, before it becomes an issue, it's going to become an issue, and then it's going to be too late. Before we go to the audience, I want to ask, do the mayors have any questions for each other? No. <laughs> or we can come back to that later, too. Yeah. We, we've been talking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so think on that, and now we can go for Q&A uh, to the audience, and we have, I think, about 15 minutes uh, until our... Uh, moving on to our Sister Waters partnership. So, Rachel will carry the mic around and we'll... Hi, I'm Tom Goltz and I'm from right here from University of Illinois at Chicago and uh, our, one of the big parts of our mission at, at UIC is to solve city problems. And listening to all the mayors, I was trying to think of um, Chicago and what we're most like here in Chicago and uh, it, it occurred to me that we're closer to the Jordan River than uh, being like the Jordan River situation than other cities. We have our own Sea of Galilee out there where we have all the, the fresh water. And then we have the Chicago River, which is an open sewer. Mm -hmm. In uh, 1900, the river was actually river, uh, engineered to run backwards. So all our waste goes that away. And uh, we also have uh, a number of tribal tensions all along the, uh, the uh, uh, shorefront. Uh, our history is loaded with examples of tribes wandering from one beach to another, and uh, riots get caused because of that. So I think the Eco Peace Movement and using the Chicago River would be a, a brilliant solution where we can uh, clean up the river and we can get people to paddle down from uh, one neighborhood, say from Albany to Park, uh, go down to the uh, Peace Park over in, over in um, uh, uh, Lockport or Bridgeport, down in Bridgeport, and they could barbecue together. And I think, uh, I think Eco Peace can come to Chicago. Well, I will tell you that the Asian carp issue is making your river much more of a uh, less glamorous kind of conversation. Uh, you know, we look at this issue and the Canadians, I mean, think about how far away they are from the Chicago River, and yet they are as concerned about Asian carp as we are. If Asian carp come into the Great Lakes, and, and we're working on a whole variety of solutions for it, my city has the world record for brown trout capture. For, for a fishing capture, okay? So we hold a world record in fishing. If Asian carp get in and follow along that coastline, we're one of the first cities and tributaries hit, which means they decimate our fishing. And we also are the city of the largest indoor or in-lake fishing contest in the world. So we already have our issues with, with zebra, zebra and quagra mussels, which by the way, you can walk across this lake to Michigan and you will not touch sand. That's how much zebra and quagga mussels we have in this lake right now, 15 trillion. 
So if you don't think we have problems already, and then you want to introduce Asian carp into that, I will tell you, this is, this is, these are not little issues anymore. These are massive issues. I have a 1400 slip marina. Are if you, you I am for separation and creating a, tra a, a proper transportation mechanism that does not hinder the transportation of the rivers. And we can do that, and, and we can work on this, but we have to work on it together. And we've offered that to the former mayor and to this mayor. We want to work together on a global basis to solve this. Because you're right, you have bigger issues down the river, and I will tell you, I've met with the mayors from the Mississippi, and they're not really happy to be the dumping grounds either, because they want to use those Mississippi rivers for, for something better too. So by the time it gets down to New Orleans down there, there's not much water left. It's just stuff. So we've got, these are, this is a big issue, and we want to get to it, and we want to work on it together, but I, I think the public needs to understand that this is not small stuff. This is trillion dollar stuff. I uh, will go to the next question, but I wanted to comment. Uh, Mr. Moko, in your presentation, I noticed that the, I think I wrote this down uh, exactly, transform sewage canal into thriving ecological corridor. We've got one of those sewage canals right here in yeah. Chicago that needs yeah. the exact same treatment. Yeah. So that, was, that was great to see. Next question from put the that, audience. Put that on the list. Oh, right over here. Oh, that's, I, do you want to use the mic, Rachel? I'd like to bring up an issue which I sort of feel is common to both the Middle East and the uh, Great Lakes area, and that's the pollution introduced in the lakes by the, uh, the coal ash fallout. We've been able to close some of the coal-fired power plants in Chicago, which were causing a lot of uh, mercury pollution in Lake Michigan. I believe we still have some of that coming from Wisconsin mm -hmm. into Lake Michigan. But also the issue might come up in the Middle East. What about the pollution from the coal-fired power plants that power the desalination plants in Israel? And isn't this an indication more that we have to phase out fossil fuels and uh, juxtapose our uh, conservation of fresh water to the expeditious introduction of carbon-neutral renewable energy? Yes. In Israel uh, nowadays there is a, a big uh, a plantation of uh, desalination plants in uh, in the coast, and this is the reason why uh, we can start talking about releasing fresh water from the Sea of Galilee to the Jordan, because uh, there is I don't know if to say enough water in Israel, but. There is uh, uh, more water than it used to be before, and uh, now we can speak about rehabilitation with fresh water that we we cannot we couldn't do it before, and and still we we're gonna build uh, another uh, desalination plant near the Jordan for uh, pull out all the salt from the. Uh, Wales, uh, the springs uh, of the Sea of Galilee. There is a salty springs that, uh, uh, with the sulfur that should be also uh, taken care, of. and uh, we cannot uh, eat the cake and leave it. Uh, yeah. What about power meant by renewable energy instead of coal? Well, I think that's what I don't know nothing about uh, this. <laughs> Next question, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have two questions, in fact, one to the panel and one uh, to Mayor Mitch. Um, for Mayor Mitch, and you mentioned uh, before that you are dealing with a nuclear plant in your area. And uh, I would like to hear a bit your views about the nuclear uh, being there and what kind of impact on the uh, watershed or the cooling uh, process and so on, the environmental impacts, I mean. And for the panel, any, uh, the mayor's been together for uh, almost uh, uh, two days, any, by the end of this day. So can you tell us what happened, any, what kind of plans, what kind of uh, relationship you built That's and what's in the future? <laughs> no, no, no secrets here. <laughs> mayor Tula, do you Thank want to answer you. Yeah, sure. initial question? Uh, it actually goes back to the gentleman's question before that. Ontario has passed legislation that all coal-fired plants have been closed. So uh, 
in the county of Bruce, we host the largest nuclear facility on the planet. We have eight nuclear reactors. And getting to your question, part is sitting on the Source Water Protection Committee, uh, the byproducts possibly going out into Lake Huron is tritium. But those levels of tritium are actually far below the, the, uh, the specs set out by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. So in our area, uh, nuclear is the second biggest industry behind uh, agriculture. So we live in a climate where, as a politician, you do not run for office unless you're supportive of nuclear uh, energy. In our area, we also have a lot of renewables. We have uh, approximately 400 to 500 uh, wind turbines that have gone up in our communities up and down the shoreline. We have some solar projects that have also go, uh, have gone online. But what we find is we have more people against uh, the renewable energy such as wind turbines than the nuclear industry in our area. So it's very dynamic, but we've been living with nuclear since the early 1960s. And uh, so our community is quite comfortable with it. So mayors, what, have, what has uh, changed yeah. in the last two days? Yeah. Uh, thank you. And the, the last two days, uh, we have uh, a great uh, chance uh, to share experience, especially with uh, uh, our colleagues in the Great Lakes uh, from uh, America and uh, North Canada, uh, uh, Canada, North America and Canada. And they talked a lot about uh, their uh, situation uh, in the past uh, years and how uh, they uh, uh, reached. Uh, a collaborative uh, work. So uh, I think uh, it is a good uh, experience and we have uh, uh, to uh, transfer it uh, into our patient uh, and to get uh, a benefit uh, from it. Uh, personally, uh, I am supporting collaboration and uh, uh, so once I arrived in uh, uh, my city, there will be a uh, 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 meeting for uh, other mayors uh, in the valley, and we will uh, try to uh, uh, make uh, a memorandum of all the municipalities in the valley and send it to the central government. I will try to uh, also uh, 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 go to uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis in the same person uh, uh, to uh, uh, launch an initiative like this. Uh, uh, to at birth, we have to uh, agree to agree before on uh, the goals that we want to achieve. Then we will have to start uh, the work. Others? Uh, it, I think it's a good idea to accelerate the, the, cir the circle between uh, our countries because uh, it, se it seems that uh, we cannot uh, do it by ourselves. Uh, even though that in uh, these uh, three days uh, I met uh, my friends from Palestine and from Jordan, and it was a, a great time with them. Um, and uh, I think that uh, if you, uh, the Americans and the Canadian, will be a part of this uh, circle uh, and join us uh, uh, with your experience in uh, rehabilitation and uh, treat all these uh, huge problems that you have here, and. Uh, uh, come uh, and uh, share with us all the, all your knowledge, and I guess that uh, you 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 will see that we also have uh, things to uh, to give and to share from our side. Uh, our problems are problems, and as we all know, problem is a problem, and. Uh, I think uh, it's a good idea to start uh, from the bottom to the top, uh, and I I, uh, I think that uh, like like as a local, uh, as a locals, we all, not from the governmental uh, uh, side, I think it's a, a very good uh, place uh, to start with. The question. Question. We thank uh, Abdullah Javier, a student here at UIC, for his translation on the spot. Very excellent. And also here, 
Nan and Bush. These are our UIC students, very talented and ready to help. And we're just so happy and proud to have you here. And thank you. Um, uh, this is a question for Mr. Um, uh, Mo Mo Molho, right? I don't know. I do Okay. Okay. I don't know. Um, so how do you plan on contributing your efforts and accelerating finding a solution uh, for the Jordan River besides building that initial relationship with your sister uh, countries? Uh, we have to remember that I'm not the mayor. <laughs> I'm just a, I'm ju yes. <laughs> I'm just an engineer. And uh, uh, my math, uh, mathematic uh, teacher uh, was telling me that uh, if I don't know what to do, I have to start doing something. And that's what we did uh, in the Jordan, uh, because uh, it was 20 years of uh, doing nothing, just talking and talking and talking, and, and uh, uh, have uh, lots of complaints of, uh, of, uh, to, the, to the government that they did, did not uh, uh, give us um, uh, enough uh, money and uh, and uh, we started we just started in what we had and uh, to succeed like people uh, 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 want to to join us because they see that it's working it can be done uh, we are not uh, we're not dealing in political issues in our part. This is very important because we are dealing only in uh, technical issues and only in uh, uh, budget issues, but uh, it's uh, proving that it can be done. That if we um, if we're not dealing with all these uh, pro political uh, problems, then it can be done, and it's very important because. Uh, after we will finish all, all our business between uh, Israel and Palestine and uh, Jordan, and I guess it will be one day, yeah? Maybe not in uh, our course, but uh, it will be uh, one day. And then uh, we have to, uh, to know that there is also technical issues that uh, ecological issues and many other things that we have to take care of, and we're dealing on that business. Why don't we have a question back here? Um, I know that we missed. Is it right here? I always have a question. Okay. If anyone else has a question, so we'll do one more and then we'll move <laughs> to the next part of the program. I just have one. And I apologize if this question has been answered because I wasn't able to come today. But one thing that really struck me um, and made me extremely optimistic about this conference is that um, I think one of the biggest benefits on fo focusing on the water is that because water is such a precious resource and it's used to gain economic and political and, and other advantages, if we focus in the midst of these conflicts, it doesn't matter where in the world they are, they're very acute in Israel, you know, Israel Palestine, Jordan area, but if you focus on the water, you can start to resolve the other conflicts, but you're not having to focus on them. And to me, the, the, the biggest, uh, I mean, ray of hope was that this is not something that the people who are attempting to solve the problem are trying. They're, they're focusing on the problem itself. And so um, I just wondered if, if, if any of you could comment on that if my observation is correct and that focusing on the water is is um, by extension focusing on the on the other problems well I'll take a crack at it one of the things that to give you a little behind the scenes action from this afternoon when the mayors were meeting for somebody like myself who has worked at a local state and federal level in, in government for 25 years there's one thing that you recognize that it doesn't take a scientist to figure out, which is there's not a lot getting done at the federal level. And there's not a whole heck of a lot getting done at the state level. And a lot of it that's getting done is actually bad. 
So there's not efficiencies built in. There's not collaborations built in. There's not partnerships built in. There's not a visionary 20, 30, 40, 50 year plan built in. None of this is happening at those levels. We are in essence forced to do that because of one of a couple of ways. Either we're forced because financially we're not getting any more money, or number two, we don't have any time. And number three, candidly, if you get to meet mayors and get to know them, the majority of them are really impatient. Okay, because we're not here to make money, because Lord knows we don't make much of that. And you're, you're not here because it's a, you know, it's a glamour game, because you don't get that either. So you're, you're, we're really here to do the work. So what we talked about today was how we're gonna get together, create a, an agenda for a, a trip over there. But you know, as we said to the Israeli delegation, they have to be, the Israeli mayors have to be there. Because we're not gonna go over unless they are. Because they have to be part of the equation, right? So we're gonna start working on the things that matter, which are water and providing sustenance to our people, period. Now, are there ways to fix that? Yes, with partnerships, with efficiencies, with moderation, with all kinds of things. But the hope and desire is, and this is what I think you're seeing from mayors all over the world, what we do is we try to fix these things at the local level, create the efficiencies, the effectiveness, the collaborations, blah, blah, blah. We do it with a visionary approach for the next 20 years or 30 years. And then we actually just throw the credit up. You want to take the credit at the state level? Go ahead and take it. You want to take the credit at the federal level? Go ahead and take it. Just do it. Maybe, oh, Nike got that first, didn't they? <laughs> all right, but I mean, that's really what it's all about because we're impatient. Just do it. You can take all the credit. You can be on Time Magazine for all we care. Just fix it. So what we're trying to do is trying to make this collaborations to show that we don't care about partisan politics. We don't care about anything. We care about our kids, and we care about their future, and we care about our people. And that's what our lives are all about. So if you've hit it on the head, if we can then take that and start elevating the conversation to the basics of life, instead of all the other clutter that is there, maybe, maybe we can make that change but we try to do that every day with everything that we do. And, and that's how we try to push it up because the fact is it's not raining down on us. Well, one addition, despite the fact that uh, such uh, uh, problems, water, environment, pollution cannot be politically separated, right. but uh, I, I do agree with you that we have to uh, go for the problem uh, itself and uh, leave uh, uh, political views, point of views uh, aside, because uh, I'm working on a, a, a collaborative, uh, on a collaborative uh, work, and so we are thinking of a, a new channel uh, to uh, uh, to be in touch with others, and in terms of my person, I, I I'm calling. We we will try to launch a new kind of diplomacy that is diplomacy of water, and uh, and we are thinking now to uh, uh, to launch an initiative from Dar al Municipality uh, 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 that could be regional uh, 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 if we have the opportunity to succeed uh, with uh, uh, first uh, with the the, the uh, community communities uh, in Jordan and then the communities in Palestine and the communities in Israel to uh, have uh, at, uh, at, at last an uh, initiative like the, the one with uh, Americans and the Canadians. So we are uh, uh, starting a new kind of diplomacy that will be uh, started from our municipalities and we will in the, the coming months till the end of this year we will launch an initiative initiative in terms of uh, our problems. Thank you. So I, th I think we're going to wrap things up and move on to the next session, but I do want to say I caught a, a comment toward the end there somewhere, some, a very simple statement that's very powerful. Uh, people want to join us because they see that what we're doing is working, I'm paraphrasing. Um, there's a lot of power in that, in that perspective, and I applaud all of you for uh, making that work in your communities. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. And best Thank of luck. And thank you so much to Joel for moderating the, the panel and bringing the mayors together. Uh, I couldn't have said the phrase better. 
than uh, Mayor Aldayat just did. We're launching a new kind of water diplomacy. And I hope uh, humbly that um, we can include all of us in this room in that effort. And today, in these two days that we've been together and the relationships and partnerships that you're making, we see as not only water diplomacy between our region of the Great Lakes and the Jordan Valley, but we also see this as the seed of something that we could hopefully build out um, more and more and use water diplomacy not only for good relationships and knowledge exchange, but also to advocate for um, rights, for better lives, for better access, and for greater sovereignty of people uh, on the grassroots level throughout these regions.